start hello ladies and gentlemen hello. welcome back to exotic astrology and today we are delighted to have shubha with us she is from dhatu yoga channel and she will enlighten us about yoga today <laughs> so i was amazed when she was sharing her experiences and her knowledge especially about yoga and how yoga is to be seen and what you guys actually so please visit her channel she has some amazing uh, content there i will put the link of the channel in the description section of this video below okay so welcome to exotic astrology and it's all yours whatever you want to share about yoga please enlighten us Uh, thank you sir thank you for having me on your channel i'm feeling very happy to be on your channel firstly so i would definitely talk on yoga which is uh, most spoken but uh, very less experienced or very conscious effort of experiencing it is uh, very minimal these days so let us see today what is yoga and how can we get uh, benefited by it in our daily life and routine so first i'll be taking through a few points here what is yoga and i'll also be taking you through what is not yoga because that is also important to know what is not yoga and uh, we'll also be going through what way it is helping us in our daily routine yeah and in our emotional journey because a lot of us will be going through our emotions yeah which is called energy in motion so once we have certain set of energies then we will be able to execute it so all these are chained okay so we will be seeing what it is helping us in uh, emotions and then we'll be uh, also seeing why we need yoga in this day and era of this uh, 21st century why we need yoga to conduct and then act yeah why why not i just be performing just as it is i'm doing good so we will see the difference there and also we will be seeing uh, why today it's slowly gearing up the potential like people are slowly moving towards yoga as well and that also will be seen and finally we'll conclude on uh, seeing some of the basic you know uh, practices which have really led in today's day and time like people practicing it and they are been able to accomplish very well so we will see few that okay so first of all we'll see what is yoga so in our uh, scriptures we have a sloka telling yujyate anena iti yoga so yuj meaning is union so what is this union all about so union of individual self with the ultimate self is on toll yes definitely that is there but consciously in our routine we will see what is happening definitely in our uh, physical body yes and our mind mentally and then with our emotions and then finally it is implemented in terms of actions so all these four dimensions in our daily routine we are doing it consciously or unconsciously it's every day happening in our daily routine yes so physically what we can tell well being so what is this union happening in a physical level so physically what is it happening we take a plate full of food yeah so before eating our food we are very clear that that this is me that is my food so once i take and consume the food what is happening that duality whatever existed will go away and it's sort of well being right this is happening in a physical level then in our mental mind so we connect ourselves we desire something right we desire and we slowly manifest that desire as something that i want it yeah conquer acquire all that will happen slowly with our thought a single thought okay this is happening in our mind the single thought is having a chain this is called thought process so this thought process slowly is happening in huge like 70000 thoughts in the mind average person has so this thought process is leading to emotions so it's energy in motion so this energy in motion is leading us to action finally it is happening in action so we can ask why we need yoga so i am all fine i am doing good why do i need yoga finally it is affecting our actions whatever we do so we would have noticed lot of people that after doing certain actions they are complaining are why did i do that 
So it is we, we have done that action. Still we have this contradictory. I have done this action, but still I'm repenting or I'm feeling bad about it. So this is something compulsively done. So how can I make a conscious effort? Yes, that is what yoga does. So it is a conscious effort wherein finally effects at a doing level, doer. Yeah. So that way, uh, or else we can see people just running in loop. Loop has uh, just definitely a beginning, but you'll be just rotating. It definitely takes me to tell that you're not traveled anywhere. So most of us, we are doing it compulsively like that. So it is taking us nowhere. This conscious effort, just conscious effort will take you to a different level. And this is definitely what is uh, being told even in scriptures. Like uh, Krishna Paramatma, he tells to Arjuna that first conduct yourself in yoga and then act. That is so true. Like once you conduct yourself in yoga and then act, the different results only you can see. Because the approach is different. We handling our emotions as different. This is very important. So why we need yoga? This is why, why we need yoga in our own Else, haphazard moments. That's it. We will also see what is not yoga. Also definitely because uh, we know what is yoga. And we should also know what is not yoga. So if we see that we are going to a yoga class. So yoga classes I go on a regular day. And I stretch myself. Okay, this gymnastic stretching or acrobatics, this is not yoga because definitely uh, it's already told, Stira Sukha Asana. That, but is it a compulsive action that, oh, I have to end up my final posture of this asana and then I'm like, no, 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 no. How much ever uh, is possible um, by doing very consciously, you know, your energy, physical energy, your emotions your mind, everything should go in harmony. Then only you can tell you are in yoga. Else you are just physically doing some acrobatics. It's not definitely yoga. Because you are definitely uh, physically or you may become fit. You may reduce some weight. But uh, the harmonious energy what is required for the free flow of prana within yourself is not definitely achieved. By this you are mentally very uh, not stable inside. Yeah. So this is what will happen. So this is this all things are not yoga. I've also seen like uh, my sir Guruji was telling me in our classes, like uh, some people they come to yoga classes for a few months and still uh, they tell that, oh, I'm not being benefited by yoga. You're not teaching us well. Which directly put the complaint on our teachers. Like what can a teacher do? Teacher can just teach us whatever the knowledge they have gained. But it is, it is up to us that how much we imbibe it and what extent we show the involvement and we uh, take it forward. So definitely I would say that uh, it is all on to us how much we are involved into it. Uh, it's not that, oh, my neighbor is doing uh, this asana so well, so I do it. So there are certain funny scenarios in classes we see. Because uh, we see our, our neighbor doing it that asana very well. So it's, it's not a compulsive chain, right? That's not a compulsive reaction action change happening here. So it's definitely for our well-being and that should be known for us. So if you go on practicing uh, day in, day out, every day, it's like uh, uh, you're going to a billionaire and asking a rupee, right? You know, it's like something like that. So you come and tell that I have not lost weight. I want to be, lose weight. We, okay, definitely it is... Uh, it will help you in losing weight. It's just a byproduct. So you're just concentrating. You're just concentrating on one of the byproducts. It has uh, huge benefits. So definitely we can get uh, all benefits. Whatever we need through yoga. It's not just a weight loss or I have a new pain. Yes, definitely all those are the byproducts. As I said. So this is one. And next, thirdly, I would like to take on our... Uh, very important uh, journey which we travel every day. It's our emotional journey or emotional well-being. So how do we gain emotional well-being in our life uh, through yoga? So as we uh, know that emotions are nothing but a chain process of thoughts. So first it comes with a thought as a desire. Karma, they say. Karma is nothing but a desire. Okay. 
So it's uh, all of us as uh, we have taken birth, we all have desires. So once uh, the desires are fulfilled, so we are happy, so definitely. So that is called a state of normal being. So once the desire is not fulfilled, right? So we get uh, different stages we are in. Like once first we become a little upset, then it manifests to a lot of frustration within because the contradictory, yeah, is happening inside within us. That uh, duality of uh, conflicts. Like I want that desire to be fulfilled and it's not being fulfilled in reality. The conflict will lead us to frustrations, agitations, and then anger. Anger can take us anywhere. Slowly, it will take us to delusions. Yeah. And delusion, like you are in a state of uh, practically something else will be happening in your mind. Oh, that should have happened. You will be stuck in some other state. So in reality and your mind, both will not be in sync. So it can lead us to any stages of insanity will take us so definitely so this karma can take us to that level so that is the reason uh, in our uh, emotional journeys routine wherever especially in our home routine we can see that you know, when uh, our desires are not fulfilled our elders you know they come and try telling us that um, you know okay it's not fulfilled it's okay you try practicing the sacrifice which is called as tyaga okay so try sacrificing it. It's okay. It's not fulfilled. It's okay. So this practice of sacrifice comes into play. So okay, you are agreeing with that and you practice. So it's called karma plus yaga. So karma is your desire, but still you are ready to let go. And that play of yaga or sacrifice comes. So this two combination will lead us to prema, which is love. But definitely in this love, okay, we'll have a stage of karma and tyaga. So this tyaga is what is happening. It's always there in your head, like very uh, much running in our head that I am sacrificing. I am sacrificing. So this is running. So this thought process is just a series of chain, which is not going to have any break it's gonna run like anything so once that sacrifice is extended for a longer duration it's you you feel like you're doing a lot of sacrifice 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 only that is running you're feeling slowly let out let out let out in a relationship and slowly you're out of the relationship and literally out that is what is happening right so this stage there is a breakdown so what to be practiced so that it takes us to a real elevated well-being, real well-being, whatever we are in search of. Because definitely everybody are looking out for a well-being, whether it is a physical well-being, mental well-being, emotional well-being. So emotional well-being plays a very crucial role because it is an interjection. It is acting as a junction between your mind and your action. Yeah. In reality, what you do and in thought process, what it is running. So it acts as an intermediate. So this emotion should be protected very well. So what to be practiced in order to have a very uh, great feeling within. Okay, This is called emotional well-being or pleasant feeling within. So what to be practiced here? So uh, the play of, you know, a complete... It's not sacrifice, a complete surrender. So what is the surrender? Okay, this uh, surrender is a very beautiful thing because uh, we have always seen that, oh, I surrender because I am, uh, because we see, right? I am, un, uh, especially in our zone, how do we surrender? Okay, we have no equipments left with us. Okay, I am left, left out, so I am surrendering to you. So this should not be a stage of surrendering. Like it should be complete surrender from within like yes we tell that i am sacrificing for whom you yeah maybe a wife tells so now the husband also will tell okay even i am also sacrificing for you this i and you the duality place so this dual game is playing and costing a lot of you're paying for it right 
So what if this I and you, the duality, whatever exists in, that is the play of yoga. Yes. So I and you, this duality should extinguish and be as one entity itself. This can be attained through complete surrender. That please, I am. So on to you. It's not that I or you. It's that we, that union that definitely has to happen. It's not just, uh, you know, very compulsive action that, okay, I am surrendering for you. No. The duality, I am not understanding what is I or what is you. It is everything is in you or everything or what you are is in you. Okay, this duality will extinguish. It's nothing. So in that case, only in that state, Krishna tells, only in that state, Okay, you can attain me. That the duality of I, you should go away in this state. This is called bhakti yoga. Okay, so this is called a devotional yoga. And this state, you get to attain me. So this is what Krishna Paramatma tells. And this is a very beautiful conversation between them, as we all know. So it's told that the bhakti. Uh, most of the like uh, we we usually see in women like um, the sacrifice is there in women and the complete surrenderness is there in women. This is like so usually it is said or uh, Guruji used to tell that most of the women can attain uh, bhakti yoga. This yoga of bhakti is quite suitable for women. I would definitely this is because in this stage you will completely surrender to your. Uh, there is nothing like I or you. So this beautiful uh, state of de devotion has attained. Okay, in this stage, you can attain complete emotional well-being and you can be at a complete bliss. Whatever you have uh, uh, seen, right? Like you are happy, ecstasy, bliss. All these words has meaning only in this stage. This is what Krishna Paramatma tells. Okay, this is emotional well-being. And then we will see uh, why we need uh, yoga in today's 21st century of such economic well-being is happening. Yes. So in this uh, day and era, why I need all this devotion? I am just concentrating on my economic well-being. That's all is enough. So yes, so economic well-being and all will come definitely only when you do. So the doer, after your Emotional well-being is fine. Then your actions. So very importantly, they say that uh, uh, your uh, mind plays a very important role in whatever actions you do. So um, someone who is uh, emotionally broken would ne definitely not be a doer. Because uh, very important uh, chakra is to be activated for you to get activated and do certain uh, energy because there, there is a chakra called Manipuraka. Okay, so that, that is a third chakra just above your navel region. That chakra exists and that is completely blocked when you are emotionally totally broken down. So we can see a lot of people who are just broken down completely emotionally. They will not be adorers in life. They will just be stagnant in their life and uh, quite a lot of uh, workout they have to do. They Their conscious level which is totally sunk down, has to slowly elevate. It, it has to be a step-by-step -step process. It's not going to take a single day. So emotional well-being is very important for us to be a doer in this uh, economic well-being. So when we tell you this economic well-being, that is only achieved when there is harmony of energy, right? Your body should help you. Your mind should help you. The chain thought process, which we discussed, emotions, that should help you. And they should all be channelized in a single direction. So, if we tell that, uh, there is a saying like, uh, Yoga Chitta Vritti Nirodha. So, Chitta is your mind. Vritti is nothing but, it is everyday taking some turns. So, for example, you are standing in the center. So, your mind is moving towards right, left top, bottom, everywhere. So what is happening? Everywhere you are being pulled. Where are you moving? You are not moving anywhere. You are just stuck. Because your energies are pulled in all the directions. 
okay uh, theory of uh, thermodynamics play right so you're stuck there and you're not going to move anywhere not forward nor backward stuck there okay so this is what we are experiencing so for us to have a good economic well being also we need yoga yeah so yoga is playing in every zone in every dimension of our life every day every moment it's not even sparing us for a moment so that is why we have to practice i would definitely tell uh, practicing of yoga is attaining god itself like that level of attaining god is not like people think that spirituality uh, is not of my this one today's day and time what is spirituality uh, required for me spirituality is not at all uh, in connection to me because only through this uh, harmonious state of your mind all this dimensions you can attain a state of uh, peace within so and that peace within is the first stage so a lot of us think that uh, ultimate thing what i need is peace no 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 ultimately yes of course for your uh, feeling inside good you need peace but finally if you have to have an good well being around you everything like economic well being emotional well being everything first requirement is peace within so only if you have peace within all that execution is definitely 100% possible so yoga would definitely tell that uh, it is in a uh, tool which helps us to i uh, know it is such a tool which helps us to attain effortless you know attainment of mental physical emotional and occupation whatever we are doing well being so it is effortless uh, way to attain yoga is that tool to attain okay so this one and um, i would also like to talk on uh, yoga why uh, to be why it is getting so much recognition and today is a uh, golden time because uh, today we can see world is going in such a high pace like we all are in a uh, uh, fast moment it's very fast everything quick results deliverables if you are an it professional you know deliverables quick so everything is being fast and furious uh, stage and time this this era so how how uh, to attain this quickly so if we would have seen if our mind is not stable okay and we are doing it um, compulsively oh i have to deliver i have to deliver and your mind is restless and you start pushing yourself pushing yourself okay and try doing it and doing it finally what is happening the outcome you are not able to do it they say that um, only in the samadhi i was just uh, seeing that um, our guruji was telling that there is no difference between uh, yoga and uh, external well being also there is no um, difference because only in the stage of samadhi samadhi is that stage we think that uh, okay yogi is sitting in samadhi means he is closing his eyes and he has entered a samadhi stage where he is not no no the samadhi is that stage wherein if you attain that stage because you are completely still only a still mind okay a still mind still body okay that only can take a right decisions in life we would have seen that only in aggression or in anger whatever decisions we have taken it's like complete havoc so if we are a um, working in a top executive position in our field, maybe anything i think everyone is working in their own piece of uh, you know take that is huge for them so if you have to definitely take a huge definitely a big decision maker you are then you have to attain yourself in a samadhi and then take a decision so see we see that uh, why we need it for today's age and time we also have an example so i would also i uh, like to take some live existing examples in today's day and time uh, you know the patanjali ramdev baba ramdev you know, and uh, acharya guru ji so these two people are doing phenomenal job how it's like i was just seeing there the other day like uh, uh, all the other brands you know whichever we are running from since decades many years they were doing phenomenally well 
they have suddenly become totally you know uh, the business is going down because uh, someone was making fun of it that uh, pranayam guruji has come and taken their uh, life energy out so only in that stage they are able to do it we have a live example so they are doing phenomenally well exponential curve we can see their growth of exponential not a uh, you know multiplicative curve yes not add addition which is just not adding the value that just exponentially multiplying their income so definitely uh, in every aspect if you see starting from your existential physical aspect to your whatever economic well being emotional well being in every phases so this yoga is playing such a phenomenal role that uh, it's uh, brilliant it's doing a brilliant outcome here so i would definitely uh, suggest and request and um, tell that yoga is uh, such a tool for our well being that uh, it's been practiced since our ancient time like since ages all our uh, yogis were been practicing it now now these days it's been exposed uh, throughout the globe even the western audience they're having lot of interest uh, taken up here on this uh, yeah on this platform of yoga so the yoga has uh, definitely been practiced since ages in india and now it's getting lot of light okay in west so this is a beautiful uh, era i would tell that we practice yoga and channelize ourselves when uh, the best version of ourselves whatever we can do see uh, the other day i was just uh, reading like uh, if i could not do it okay that task and i didn't do that's okay i can let go of that but if i was able to do it and still i didn't do it that would be a pain cause of a pain so here and i would definitely request that if you are capable of doing it and you are not doing it then that's a main cause of misery i would say so you should channelize all your energies in one harmonious direction to do whatever you can do so that is what yoga helps us to do so whatever we can't do that definitely even like um, it's not that we have come here to do all the work we can't be doing all the work right we are not god ourselves to be doing all the work so we have to be doing certain part of our job very harmoniously so that definitely yoga helps us so that's what i had to tell um, basically why we need yoga and uh, what it is adding value in our today's day and time and why i have to practice it so practically this is adding a lot of value to our life uh, so definitely it also has a higher dimension spiritual dimension of uh, well being as well so why we need spirituality because uh, spirituality is uh, that uh, dimension that comes as a last after your energy action and all that is the ultimate uh, source i would say or ultimate destination or ultimate thing that comes the individual self and the ultimate self really. okay so so basically it is our data okay so spirituality is nothing but our source so if we are somewhere in our life uh, unhappy miserable not somewhere feeling connected i've been disconnected somewhere not happy uh, that means our connection is somewhere disconnected here yeah. so our main connection is that supreme godhead okay that connection if we have see if we don't even have uh, harmony around us right like we may undergo uh, traumas in our uh, you know surrounding well being like uh, materialistic well being or mundane well being whatever we have even that is not uh, fulfilled for us if our connection with that ultimate from where we have come out just as a spark they say that uh, if there is a huge bowl of uh, uh, you know um, fire which is lit and just a spark out of it which is come as that is so if we see our source of light 
proper connection if we have then we are in our ultimate well being there is nothing no other well being than this like we are that spark of that ultimate godhead and we don't need anything for us to keep us happy see because why we are going out and working that bread or butter what why are we going basically round and round and doing all the things activities in our life whatever activity we are doing ultimate is for well being whatever well being you are looking for maybe it is your external well being yeah you want a luxurious car or luxury house maybe you know nice clothes whatever we are looking for a well being you know yeah and mundane well being okay and emotional well being so all those well beings are definitely supreme well being is that godhead so if that is there like we can tell that uh, we are connected and we have everything even though literal sense we don't have anything around us we are connected to that source of we that i am this anandamaya poshade so what is this ananda that is uh, you have attained that state of uh, chidananda swarupa that our original swarupa is that chidananda so we are that small spark out of that main big huge source and that original source is a chidananda and that is what we are so daily in routine we feel very sorry to tell that in our mundane life that in our routine we see lot of like even in our scriptures it is being given that uh, in kaliyuga there is lot of quarrels happening so that is so evident we see just we go out and see there is just a quarrel what is that quarrel for mine versus yours so mine uh, so we we have this uh, thought within us very very adamantly fixed inside us i would use the word adamantly fixed because that is not the truth but it is we are feeling that it is a truth that uh, whatever i need is a necessary and what you need is a great so this is what each and every one are thinking and feeling and all so this is definitely not leading us to any sort of well being also uh, because you can you go out and see that people go on um, conflicts and go till the court i got like for fights and all and finally a party who is one is also not happy and who is lost is definitely there nothing to tell about that so it's not the reason of well being so we have to definitely understand and see what is it just one question just one conscious question for one minute because each one of us are just running in that high we think that we are running in a race nobody is running any race nobody is going anywhere this very this is very much important to understand that nobody is running any race we see here, i hear like people telling i am running my own race no no nobody is running any race here everybody just want one thing they want just well being whatever there there is no race in you know there is no well being in telling that oh i have put someone down like uh, the other day i was just seeing that prahlad maharaj was uh, telling so he was sent to the academy class okay to be his father five years old he dies like the five year old kid will like, nothing at all will not be even able to see what is right what is wrong in that age that supreme soul is like thinking about the higher dimensions of it uh, this like it goes to the the kid goes to the you know ashram to learn and they are teaching uh, economic uh, you know uh, gyan knowledge political science knowledge all that they are teaching on the kid because his father is asura hiranyakashipu is his father so his enemy is lord vishnu himself hiranyakashipu's enemy is lord vishnu so lord vishnu how to tackle lord vishnu now so i should be well versed in my son should be well versed in the political science economic science 
yeah uh, and if he gains all this knowledge then he will be able to surpass you know lord vishnu himself and then he will be able to defeat our enemy and then we will be able to be a supreme soul whatever he had in his mind so the kid listens all that but the kid is uh, not ready to uh, imbibe that uh, thought whatever uh, they have been taught the kid has been taught but it, it it is like the kid himself has a very supreme conscious level so he comes back to home uh, to his palace father takes him and tell asks the kid like uh, tell me what did you learn in your classes and they'll be very happy to know what you know so the kid tells they are teaching me that is your enemy this is your friend they are teaching me political science they are teaching me economic i'm not understanding this why is that enemy because uh, our source is godhead vishnu himself so we are just a part of him so how come that person will be my enemy and this will be my friend i'm not understanding so that is what uh, bhakta pralad tells to his father and the father is like total is asura and he's total in anger he is boiling in angry so this is what we see like well being like it doesn't come through uh, putting someone i'll put someone down okay this is uh, rajo guna they call so there are three types of guna guna right so tamas rajas sattva and it is guna theta right? above all these three gunas there is last stage of gunas called guna theta above all these things beyond that stage we find god head that's what they say so in that uh, anger or oh, i will put someone down and i will win there is no race running nobody is running any race so people they all think that we are running some race here and we have to conquer acquire maybe we will end up acquiring but we will fail to get a well being that is what is happening in today's world if you can see everything has been acquired and we have split the planets into my god you see the state of our planet it's like god god can save us so that is the stage now so conquer 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 we have totally ruined the planet then emotionally we are good no so this is the stage where in uh, we have to consciously look in and see what is it which is failing because everything we may conquer acquire 